Hello and welcome to A Bit of Truth with uh, Cindy and Paul Height. We're glad that you're with us today. Good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying the beautiful weather we've been having. So we are enjoying doing this and connecting with a lot of people from our church and as well as those that are online just viewing us. And we appreciate your feedback so much and your questions and your prayer requests. And also we give a little announcements of what's going on at Evangelical Christian Church of Waterbury, Connecticut from time to time. So why don't you open up in a word of prayer? Sure. And then we can begin to minister to them today. Sure. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for each and every person that this video will come into their earshot. We pray, Father, that as they're listening to your word of encouragement, that you would speak life into their families and into their soul and in their Christian walk. I ask that you give each person good health and protection. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 couple announcements. Uh, hello, Angela. Good to see you. And Kara Murphy, it's nice to have you uh, tuning in with us today. Um, this Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget, get your mother's a wonderful gift. All right. So <laughs> where would we be without our mothers? Our mothers are covered. Our, we got ours done. Yeah. yeah. So I put it in the mail yesterday. And if my kids are watching, if my kids are watching, just hint, saying, hint, hint. 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 <laughs> the next announcement is this Saturday at our church, Evangelical Christian Church. Gino. At, hey, Gino, good to see you. We are having a family sidewalk chalk event. We're inviting the families of our church to come to 1325 Watertown Ave in Waterbury, bring your own chalk. And this Saturday, May 9th, from 11 to 1, we're going to have different families come together. We will practice social distancing, but bring your own chalk, and then we can draw pictures on different parking spots, encouraging words, and any type of designs that you would like. And if you have uh, would like more information on that, please contact Claudia Matozo and she would be happy to give you information. So that's this Saturday, May 9th at 11 uh, to one o'clock. So baby, why don't you share with us? Sure. Here. And then in continuation with uh, pastor, it asked me to, to talk on prayer. Uh, we've been talking just little nuggets every week on um, just developing a prayer life and why we're all home, we're all, being, I think, stretched and where I think we're all have more time to pray. And um, we've often said that we live on a beautiful mountain and we like to go up to the top of mountain. There's a little uh, swinging chair up there and we like to go up and just look across the mountain and cast all our prayers across the mountain to, to God's ears. So we mm -hmm. do a lot of praying up there. And um, but today I'm going to talk about just one little element of prayer that we don't really talk about that much. And that is forgiveness. And um, no one it's kind of a difficult process that we all go through. Um, but the Bible tells us and uh, and especially like the Lord's Prayer in order to have an effective prayer, one of the elements is to be a person who forgives and forgiveness is hard. I mean, sometimes yeah. it's hard and many of us are being stretched. I was talking with a, a young mom and, you know, sometimes, you know, being at home with all this closeness, it wears on some of us and, and we have, we have to forgive more. And, um, or maybe there's something in your past where there's somebody that really hurt you deep and, God is calling you to say, you know what? I want you to be have an effective prayer life and I want you to forgive this person. Mm -hmm. Now, my husband and I, we often joke because I'm 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 usually what by the next day I'm She's over. over. Any conflict or argument we have. Once in a while, once in a while it I I hit one where it, it takes me a few days more, but usually it's overnight. Usually <laughs> she's good overnight. Usually well, I, love her. I wake up with amnesia and I forget all about it. But anyways, um the Lord talks about it in the Lord's Prayer, and it says, and forgive us um 
as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. So in that's in Matthew 6, 12, it talks about forgiving. God tells us to forgive others so that God himself can forgive us. And then if you go down further to Matthew 6, 14 and 15, it says, Christ explained this, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father um, will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive you of your sins. And that's in Matthew 6, 14 through 15. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that through these two scriptures, um, Christ calls us, he commands us to forgive. In order for us to have effective prayers, we need to forgive. And so um, uh, one of the things that I think of, of trying to forgive and to uh to have an effective prayer life is to forgive other people and have it makes us to have more effective relationships and um it's clear the bible's very clear in these scripture verses that it says for us to forgive and then also in mark 11 24 through 25 it says therefore i tell you Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And here's the key part. And when you stand praying, okay, there's a condition here. If when you stand praying, you hold anything against someone, forgive him so that your heavenly father may forgive you of your sins. And so I think God is calling many of us to be forgiving towards one another so we can have a more effective prayer life and not have anything um, clogging that connection that God wants us to have such an effective prayer life. I heard a man of God preach one time to people who would say, you don't know what they did to me. I cannot forgive them. And he says, well, then pray this. Make me willing to forgive. Lord, make me willing to be made willing yeah. to forgive. That's a beautiful prayer. And that's, and you know, sometimes that that's just part of forgiveness is it's a process of, um, of forgiving somebody. But what people often forget is by not forgiving say they don't deserve my forgiveness. And most people really don't deserve your forgiveness, but that's not how God leaves us. God says that we're supposed to forgive. That's right. And so, um, that's our, our little nugget of truth we want to leave with you on prayer. And uh, Pastor is going to, hi, Maria Capuana. Uh, and Angela Bovino. We, oh, Annette. and Matt Gambucci and Claire. So good to have you tuning in with us today. So glad you're with us. Love those bags, that Gambucci. They're all over. Love them. Thank you for your kindness. So, so we, hey, we can't use them right now, though. No. Why don't you tell us about uh, tomorrow? What you're doing tomorrow morning at eight o'clock in the oh, with the ladies? Yeah, sure. I'll have to I'll have to post the video. I sent it to the women through the women's ministry email through uh, Daughters of Grace. But tomorrow morning, I've been asked to be a guest speaker on um, it's Women with Purpose or Women of Worth. Women of Worth. And uh, tomorrow at eight a.m. and I can post the information the where you have to have a zoom account and you can tune in and listen uh it's on kings and kingdoms and so tomorrow morning i'll be uh talking to the ladies on um, at eight o'clock but and these are women all over the world that yeah, are colombia um United that States. are dialing in to listen to this so it will be a wonderful time Couple other announcements. Remember, every Friday night at our church, we're praying from 7 to 8 p.m. at Evangelical Christian Church in Waterbury. And then every Tuesday is individual fasting and prayer where we do the same thing. We practice social distancing and then we come together. And of course, our Sunday service online is www.christisalive.org. And 1030 is when we post it. We do a live feed, and also it's on Facebook and YouTube as well. So we'd love to have you join us, and make sure you call your moms and 
bless them for the blessing that they are. Now, today is my sixth teaching on the life of Joshua. We've been looking at the faith <coughs> of God, the faith of God in the life of Joshua. And really the title of the series is Faith for Possessing Your Tomorrows. God had a lot of promises for Moses that he did not fulfill. And they come right down to the next leader, his protege, Joshua. And Joshua had to learn how to lay hold of by faith to lay hold of his tomorrows and the promises that God had for him. And so today we're going to talk about releasing that faith in our lives so we can see God's blessings and goodness and promises come to pass. But before we do that, I want to just go back and do a little review because the first thing you need to know about a faith with a follower of Jesus Christ is that you have to uh, acquire it. And Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you got to still yourself before the Lord and hear him speak to you through the word, dreams, visions, preaching, teaching, online church. However God speaks to you, you have to still yourself. And that's how faith comes into our hearts. Secondly, you have to learn to activate it. And in Joshua 1.4, God told Joshua specific boundaries, lanes to stay in. He was not to conquer India. He was not to conquer Afghanistan. He was not to conquer China. He was to conquer Canaan. And if God's called you to be a mechanic, don't stoop to becoming a president. If God's called you to be a teacher, don't stoop to becoming a prime minister and step out of your lane. You will never activate the faith of God in your life. You will abort it if you do something that God has not called you to do. So staying in the parameters is what God was telling Joshua, and he gave him specific boundaries in Joshua 1.4. So today, we're going to talk about once we've acquired faith and once we've activated by staying in our calling, lawyer, engineer, salesman, whatever our calling is, we need to then move into authoritative faith. That's part six. How do you function in authoritative faith? Well, they said of Jesus, he speaks as a man with authority, and even the demons listen to him. Jesus had authoritative faith. You know why? We're going to talk about it. But first, let's look at the text in Joshua 1, 5. All right. God says, speaking the word of the Lord to Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will also be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So what was it that Joshua did to have authoritative faith that not one of the promises of God failed to him? One of the few characters in the Bible at the end of Joshua, you'll see that. One word. It's the same thing. That happened to Jesus. He was obedient. Jesus learned to obey. And we have to learn to obey. Obedience is not faith. Obedience is the way to authoritative faith. We activate it and then we can function in authority, delegate authority, just as Joshua did, just as Jesus did, just as God wants us to function in that. Now, Jesus talked about the similar promise to Joshua in the New Testament to all of us. And let me read it to you in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. After Jesus obeyed everything that the Father said, he said, after the death, burial, and resurrection, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. Be obedient. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be obedient. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Obedience is the way to authoritative faith. Your faith will grow with obedience. Your faith will diminish with disobedience. Jesus said in John 14, 21, he that has my commands and keeps them or obeys them, he's the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. Authoritative faith, all right? So important. It's not how loud you scream and, and get it under the blood. For 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
let him cleanse you from all unrighteousness yes. so that his authoritative faith can mm -hmm. flow through you and bless you and bless others and glorify God. Amen. 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 Well, we're so glad that you tuned in today. We're grateful for all you church members of Evangelical Christian Church of Waterbury. And those of you that are online viewers, we're so grateful that you're liking this, you're sharing this. We love it when you like and share these things. And also, we've been starting something new with a YouTube uh, page. We have a YouTube channel under Paul Height, H-E-I-D-T. And you would really bless Cindy and I if you would go to our YouTube channel and hit like, subscribe, and, and even share it. It would really help us to minister to others. And uh, that's what we want. We want to encourage people to grow during this time, this COVID-19, and let's get back into the church soon. Amen. Yeah. Pray for our president. Pray that he functions in wisdom. Pray that he has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. He has a deaf ear to those that are giving him bad counsel that would hurt our country. And so we would encourage you to do that. Well, I didn't see any prayer requests. No, Annette, we don't need any more, but thank you yes, very much. Yes, we do. Yes, we do, Annette. <laughs> well, there's your mother. Uh, Annette, but there's a, for those of you that are, Annette always gives us bags. I love bags. If you know anything, I love Grocery bags. store bags. Yeah. She gives them red and yellow, black and white. Well, I like purses green. too. I like purses, handbags too. Yeah. Uh, did you say hi to your mother? Yes. Hi, Mary Mom. Lawrence. 